Hey there everybody, this is Mike and you're watching At Home in Wild Spaces. It's been really difficult recently to tune into the news or social media and not see another report about a bear attack or similar incident. And the reason for that is pretty simple. There have been a lot of issues this year and bear attacks and conflicts with bears tend to always make the news. But even before the events of 2021, I came across a publication that claimed the dangerous grizzly encounters had gone up by more than 200% between 2019 and 2020. Now, this publication didn't cite any sources, but following all the attacks this year, I wanted to jump in and separate fact from fiction and answer the questions. Are bear attacks increasing? And if so, why? But before we get started, I want to invite you to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on any future videos. With that, let's jump into it. Here are some key numbers to keep in mind. As of mid-August 2021, there have been six fatal bear attacks in North America, three in the United States and three in Canada. Since 1990, there have been on average fewer than three fatal bear attacks in North America per year. 2021 is now tied with the year 2005 for the most fatal bear attacks since the turn of the century. And with much of the summer and fall season still ahead of us, those numbers could still go up. And this all comes on the heels of the record number of grizzly attacks in 2020. The question is, what's driving these conflicts between humans and bears? You might be surprised by the answer. For the last few months, I've been in contact with wildlife managers from the National Park Service as well as Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks to try and understand the factors that may be driving this increase in bear attacks. And the explanation is fairly nuanced, but I'm going to do what I can to keep it simple. In Yellowstone National Park, possibly the most famous home of grizzly bears in the lower 48 states, bear attacks are actually at an all-time low and have averaged roughly one attack per year since the 1980s. And that's in spite of year after year record-setting park visitation. But just beyond park borders, the story is a little different. According to Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, there has been an uptick in bear attacks in the state of Montana over the last couple of years. Looking at this graph from Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, what you'll notice is that there's a remarkable correlation between the number of bear encounters and the number of bear attacks. This correlation between bear encounters and attacks is something that both Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks and Yellowstone National Park cited in response to this question of whether or not bear attacks are on the rise. Bears are in fact a lot more predictable than I think most people realize. This is really well illustrated by the Interagency Grizzly Bear Report, which is a collaboration between federal, state and tribal agencies. According to the most recent edition, there were 6,542 documented encounters between humans and grizzly bears within Yellowstone National Park between the years of 1991 and 2018. In 58% of those encounters, the bear's reaction was neutral, meaning not aggressive, not fearful. The bear simply did not react to the presence of people. In 34% of the encounters, the bear simply fled the bears exhibited curious behavior in 3% of those encounters. In 1% of those encounters, the bears exhibited warning behavior, including growling, huffing, popping of jaws, etc. The bears showed aggression in 4% of those encounters without making contact in what is typically known as a bluff charge. Finally, less than 1% of those encounters resulted in an attack. Two quick things to keep in mind while considering those numbers. The first is that you would reasonably expect a certain level of variability, particularly with bears outside of national parks that are perhaps less accustomed to encountering people. A quick re-examination of the data from Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks would seem to suggest a higher level of aggression for bears outside of the national park. But not every bear encounter is reported and those encounters where the bears showed aggression tend to be reported more consistently. Even with those limitations, these figures give us a really good idea of how bears generally react to people. And it's clear during a bear encounter, the most likely outcome is a peaceful outcome. Quoting from the interagency grizzly report, despite their ferocious reputations, 29 years of human bear interactions data from Yellowstone National Park suggests that grizzly bears are tolerant of people in most encounters. So if bear behavior is generally predictable and grizzlies are generally tolerant of people in most encounters, then what is driving the increase in bear attacks? There appear to be about four contributing factors. First, after being systematically eliminated for most of their historic range, grizzly bear numbers are increasing. In 1975, it's estimated that there were 136 grizzly bears in the greater Yellowstone area. Today, it is estimated that more than 700 grizzly bears now occupy the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. 
These are added to the roughly 1,000 grizzlies in northern Montana, as well as other populations in Idaho and Washington state. Some scientists have even suggested that Yellowstone has reached carrying capacity for its grizzly bear population. And as part of this recovery, grizzly bears have actually begun recolonizing sections of their historic range where they haven't been seen in close to 100 years. This brings us to factor number two. In addition to there being more bears on the landscape, there are also more people on the landscape. The number of visitors and long-term residents that now share space with both grizzly bears and black bears has exploded in recent years. And thanks to limitations on things like international travel or popular indoor activities due to the COVID-19 pandemic, people have turned to park and forest lands in astronomical numbers. There are more people on the landscape sharing space with these animals than there likely has ever been before. In the simplest terms, more bears and more people on the landscape means more human bear encounters. And more encounters mean more opportunity for conflicts. But it's important that we underline the word opportunity because while there's a correlation between the number of bear encounters and the number of bear attacks, attacks have in fact lagged behind and in places like Yellowstone National Park have remained effectively stagnant despite the increase in both bears and people. So there's more to this issue. Which brings us to factor three. Many people who occupy space on these shared lands with bears are either not aware of bear safe practices or are choosing to ignore them. Perhaps you remember this episode where a woman in Yellowstone National Park approached a mother grizzly um, for the sake of capturing a few photos on her phone. The majority of bear charges occur when an individual is 30 yards or closer to a bear. Park regulations require that visitors remain 100 yards from bears and wolves. This woman was perhaps 40 or 50 feet away. This was entirely predictable and avoidable. And she's fortunate that the outcome was not more severe. She's since been charged with approaching and harassing wildlife in Yellowstone National Park and now faces the likelihood of having to pay a multi-thousand dollar fine and even the possibility of jail time. If you've been watching our videos for a while, you've heard this before. A cell phone is the absolute worst tool available for capturing photos of wildlife. This is especially true in the case of large predators like bears. If you want a good look at these animals, then bring a spotting scope, a good pair of binoculars, or a super telephoto lens. Beyond putting yourself or others in danger, there are legal repercussions for wantonly endangering people and wildlife. As was the case this year with a visitor to Grand Teton National Park who left food and garbage out in her campsite which ultimately attracted a grizzly bear which had to be tranquilized and then relocated. She was fined close to $6,000 which all things considered is a pretty minor consequence, especially when you compare her case to an event that occurred just south of Glacier National Park this year. A group of experienced cyclists were camping in a town just south of the park. The victim's party had stored food in their tent overnight. A grizzly bear showed up at around three o'clock in the morning, startled them, at which point they properly secured their food. But at that point, the damage was already done. The bear had clearly associated their sleeping area with a potential food reward. On top of that, once you remove the food, that doesn't take away the scent. Bears have a remarkable sense of smell. Even though we can't smell it, even though the food is not physically there anymore, the scent in all likelihood was still there. And tragically, the bear followed that scent, dragged a woman out of her tent, and she was ultimately killed in the exchange. Bear safety is, in fact, not all that complicated. It is, however, something that a lot of people are not familiar with. Other people have perhaps knowingly violated bear safety practices and simply did not see an immediate consequence for that behavior. And this is something that I actually see quite frequently. Allegedly experienced people go outdoors and behave in a manner that is contrary to what is responsible. Quite honestly, it does not matter how many nights you've spent in the backcountry, how many miles you have under your belt. The question of whether or not you are putting yourself and others in danger or whether or not you are part of the solution instead of the problem is dependent entirely upon behavior. I want to be clear, it's not my intent to blame the victim. It is, however, my hope that we don't let tragedy pass without learning from it. If we can prevent a similar situation from happening in the future, then it's worth having the conversation. Keeping your food and your sleeping space separate is one of the cardinal rules of spending time in bear country. Factor four, sometimes there are just circumstances that you don't have control over and that you can't affect, but that you can prepare for. And we're gonna talk about a couple of those really quick. In addition to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has motivated more people to get outside and enjoy outdoor activities. In 2021, much of North America has been experiencing severe drought. By some accounts, it's the worst it's been in 1,200 years. And in drought conditions, there are limitations on natural resources. And limitations on resources can result in more aggressive behavior from animals like bears. 
Strain on resources may have contributed to a number of attacks this year, including a fatal attack in Colorado. The perpetrator in this case was a mother black bear, and the attack seems to have been predatory in nature. In another example of how drought conditions may have contributed to an attack, a young black bear brazenly attacked a group of individuals on the 4th of July in an apparent attempt to take their food. The bear in this case may have also been habituated to human food or trash. Without being able to address every bear attack individually, the largest segment of bear attacks tend to follow a very specific pattern. Generally, they involve an individual who accidentally surprises or startles a bear and the bear perceives a threat either to themselves, a food source, or their offspring. Such was the case just outside of West Yellowstone this year where an experienced wilderness guide stumbled across a grizzly bear that was defensively protecting a moose carcass. All the details of the attack are not known, but this event, like other bear attacks that have occurred this year, present an opportunity to talk about a key point of bear safety. And that is that groups of three people or more are almost never attacked by bears. But more than that, two people who stand their ground during a charge are almost never attacked either. I've personally discussed this issue with Dr. Tom Smith, one of the world's leading authorities on bear safety, and he told me at the time that he was not aware of any incident where two people stood their ground during a charge and the bear even touched them. I also discussed this with Kerry Gunther, Yellowstone's chief bear biologist, who admittedly told me without jumping into the data he wouldn't be able to give me a definitive answer, but did tell me that he's not aware of any incident in Yellowstone National Park where two or more people stood their ground and were attacked during a charge. A week prior to releasing this video, there was an incident where two hikers were attacked by a sow grizzly defending her cubs. They did not run and they did use bear spray and suffered minor injuries. However, there was a dog involved in that encounter and we may talk about how that changes the dynamic a little bit in a future video. But the point is this, when you travel outdoors, if you can travel with just one other person, carry and know how to use bear spray and do not run during a charge, your chances of avoiding injury are very good. If you travel in a group of three or more, they're even better and allow you to mitigate any risk relating to factors like drought or bear health and will give you confidence to be able to travel safely and responsibly in bear country. So in conclusion, yes, fatal bear attacks have increased in the last couple of years, but they remain extremely rare occurrences, especially given the explosion of visitation to both park and forest lands. Interestingly, the COVID years have also seen an increase in driving fatalities and drowning fatalities, as well as avalanche fatalities. There have been more cases of reckless driving, and there's even evidence that ATV fatalities have gone up as well. Honestly, I don't think anybody could have anticipated all the little ancillary effects of COVID-19. Thanks to the disruption of the past couple of years, there are just so many more people on the landscape. Add to that hazardous behavior, drought strain, and a wider distribution of grizzly bears, and the result has been more opportunities for conflict. I've spent the last decade repeatedly and regularly encountering these animals, and I've had a few uneasy encounters which have shown me the importance of knowing how to act in bear country. But despite the headline hysteria, which focuses on conflict and tragedy to the exclusion of all else, bear attacks remain extremely rare, even with park and forest lands playing host to record numbers of people. The last few decades have demonstrated clearly that people and bears can coexist. It requires a little education, personal and social responsibility, and maintaining a respectful distance from these iconic animals. For more on bear safety and critical wild spaces news, stay tuned to At Home in Wild Spaces. And before we wrap up, I want to thank our public lands and wildlife managers for their efforts to keep people and wildlife safe. I also want to extend a special thanks to Morgan Jacobson from Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks and Carrie Gunther, Yellowstone National Park's lead bear biologist for providing data and expertise critical to the production of this video. If you'd like to get a better understanding of bear management and get some insights into a number of viral bear encounters from Yellowstone National Park this year, I encourage you to check out this video from the National Park Service. The link's included above and in the description. And before you take off, make sure to hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time on At Home in Wild Spaces.